What's up guys? If you're new here, my name is Jackie, and if you're not new here, welcome back. Today we are going to be doing a little bit of a seed haul, starting off with what I got in my stocking from John. But we are also going to be looking at a lot of the seeds that I got throughout the gardening season because that is the most cost effective way to buy seeds for your garden. If you don't know, a lot of seed companies, especially Botanical Interest and Am I Gardener, do end up having a middle of the season sale around, I think it might be around like July, maybe August, where you can get really fantastic deals on their seeds to then plant for the next year. I know there's some misconception about the date that you find on you know the backs of seed packets like for rare seeds it's up here that says packed for 2023 sell by 12 31 23 that does not mean that come that date they expire and you have to throw them out it's not like food they can still be grown some varieties especially pelleted seeds if you see that like super tiny seeds say that they're pelleted for more easy uh, handling those will lose their uh, germination rates a little bit faster certain varieties also decline a little bit faster but for the most part your seeds will be good to grow for years to come especially if you store them in a watertight situation like I do here, which I'll be talking about. If you store them in a cool, kind of temperate climate where they're not getting moisture, uh, they will last you a really long time. So go ahead and stock up on your favorite things and they'll be good for a long time. But what we're gonna talk about today is some fun new varieties of things that I haven't tried, but also things that I did grow last year that I thought that I would share with you because they are some of my favorites. So first we're going to talk about the things that I got in my stocking from my husband, John. I have a, have a spreadsheet kind of going of things that I want from each website. It's a work in progress, you know, just kind of like a wish list, if you will. But I didn't share it with him because I wanted to see what he would purchase on his own. Uh, kind of, you know, what he would pick if he was the gardener. And he got some really interesting things. Now, of course, uh, when you order, you get free seeds. I got just like a Merlot lettuce from Baker Creek and then this tall sunflower from Botanical Interest. But from Botanical Interest, he bought candy cane chocolate cherry. Those are fun stripy sweet peppers and pink eye purple hull beans. Now beans are something that I'm gonna be focusing on a lot this year because they're really prolific and you can get a lot of food out of a little bit of space, both for fresh eating like green beans as well as dried beans that you can add to things like chili and stuff like that. So then on to what I got from Baker Creek. He got me these Berna Velvet Blue Pansies, Sweet Chocolate Peppers, Dark Blue Panther Catmint, Purple of Sicily Cauliflower, and Lucky Tiger Tomato. I think that this is some really interesting things, things that I wouldn't necessarily pick for myself to grow, but that's that's kind of why I wanted him to pick out things that weren't him working from a wish list because I want to see what kind of gardener he would be. He knows that I do like growing purple things, so he got the Purple of Sicily uh, Cauliflower. I have this love for growing purple things in my garden, but yeah, I'm really excited to try these, especially uh, these sweet chocolate peppers. I absolutely love growing peppers. I don't necessarily like eating them, although I do like to dehydrate them and grind them into powders to put into things. I actually did dedicate like two and a half raised beds that were like six feet by three feet this past year for peppers, both hot and sweet. And I was actually able to dehydrate and grind a lot of those down to actually give to family members for Christmas gifts and that was super fun. So now that we have seen what the little stash that I got in my stocking, I want to share with you things that I have in my own seed collection that I have been working on obtaining over the past couple years, but mainly my collection has really grown this past year when I spent quite a bit of money on some seed sales. So this is how I keep my seeds. It's just in a photo organizer container from Hobby Lobby. They run about $15. You might be able to find them at Joann's if you use like a 40% off coupon, but promise me you will not buy them from Michael's. Michael's regularly has these for like $40. That is asinine. 
I don't understand how they think that they can charge that, especially when everybody else, all the other craft stores, sell them for nowhere near that price. But anyways, I keep most of my seed packets in there because they are easy to keep in the little categories. But then for bulk seeds, I just have one of these small containers from Target. And this is where I store my microgreens. So I've got uh, black oil sunflower microgreens. Uh, we've got Rambo purple sprouting radish, uh, red garnet sprouting amaranth, and Waltham 29 broccoli. And something that I want to make known with these seeds is they're nothing special. They are the same seeds that you would buy from anywhere else especially like uh, radish seeds and like the Waltham 29 broccoli, you can grow these seeds to maturity and they will give you that same head of broccoli, except you are buying four ounces for probably the same size that you're buying two grams somewhere else, just because of the nature that these are meant to be grown. So keep your eye out for some varieties. If you know that you wanna grow a lot of them, check out to see if you can get them in bulk from places like True Leaf Market where you can get like microgreen seeds. That is a really good way to make your budget extend, especially if you have people in your community that you could pitch in and kind of do in order together. And then you could each get even still a few ounces or like this black oil sunflower seed. This is a pound, a pound of black oil sunflower seeds. Now I bought these to do microgreens for my chickens and I will be having a video on doing microgreen seeds, but these are fantastic for human consumption as well. The whole microgreen process takes one week from the beginning to the end when you're harvesting and eating. So they're a really good thing to have even in your like emergency kit because they are packed with nutrients and it only takes a week to grow. So now that we've talked a little bit about that, let's get into some of the really fun varieties. Heart of Gold Melon, it's like a cantaloupe. Got Delice de la Table Melon and Moon and Stars Watermelon. I think it's so beautiful because every watermelon actually has like a moon and then speckled stars and even the leaves are speckled. It's just a really fun plant to grow. Um, so I will definitely be trying to get some of those to actually come to fruition this next year. I have a ton of beans. I'm a little bit obsessed with all of the different types of beans that are available. And a lot of these I grew last year that I will definitely be getting a lot more from. Um, in case you've never seen these, like you are not limited to boring like black beans or pinto beans, which if you're in it for sustenance, if you want a lot of beans, you can go buy a bag of those at the grocery store and plant them just the same. And it's a really cost effective way. But for me, I absolutely love beautiful plants. So I have these Calypso beans. These are black turtle beans. Got painted pony. And then these aren't, aren't the prettiest to look at dry because these are meant for like fresh eating. These are burgundy royal bush beans. And then I've got some garbanzo beans. And now into the ones that are, that are new to my collection, which I'm so excited to grow, are these red swan bush beans. They're beautiful, like a pinky red, and the flowers are pink. So pretty. I've got these purple TP beans and dragon tongue beans. I know a lot of people have grown these. They look really fun and interesting. And as far as my knowledge, any bean that you eat fresh like this, even if they're like fun colored when you pick them, if you boil them, I do believe they do turn green, but that can be a fun little magic trick for your kids into tricking them to eat more vegetables. If you are looking for the absolute best basil in the world to grow, especially if you are in an apartment or you have an indoor kitchen garden or on a balcony or something, Piccolino basil, 100% where it's at. This is so fragrant, so potent. It's beautiful, it's adorable. It grows in this little like globe shape. 100% recommend Piccolino basil. I grew these, this purple ruffles basil last year and I did not have luck with it. it uh, hardly any of them were purple. They were really leggy. It did not produce much bushy growth, no matter how many times I cut it back to try and produce more lower shoots. It just wasn't working for me. But then 
I added to my basil collection, so I'll get to try lots more this next year. We've got Thai basil, holy basil, lemon basil. I need to also put in my order for lime basil. That's something that I really want to grow next year as well. Got lettuce leaf basil. These things are huge. Jess just talked about in her seed haul video how good they are to use as like lettuce wrap substitute. And then we've got the good old staple of Italian Genovese basil. And I also got a lot of different basil varieties because I sell plant starts and herbs are incredibly popular. I do have a video that I made last winter before I ever started um, selling seeds, kind of like what I expected to go down and everything, but I am gonna be making an updated version of that. Continuing on with the herbs, we've got a good old staple rosemary, We've got moss curled parsley. You can see a little bit right there. Majorum. I don't ever know if I'm saying that right. A good old tetra dill. Got lemon balm. A lot of people really liked buying lemon balm from me last year. And funny enough, I didn't grow any in my own garden. So that is definitely something that I'll be growing this next year. We've got sweet Annie. Feverfew. Candy stevia. German chamomile. I have chamomile coming up absolutely everywhere in my garden. Even though it's winter right now, it is just popping up everywhere because I planted a row of it and it's just seeded itself, which is fine. Totally fine. Chamomile is absolutely gorgeous. Then we've got English thyme, long-standing cilantro. Now, if you want an aphid trap crop, plant cilantro. This plant was covered in aphids. But between that and some of the weeds that I had in my garden, I didn't deal with any aphid problems anywhere else that I noticed. So I will pl be planting that again, simply just to keep aphids off of my garden. Uh, we've got some more parsley. And then this one from Baker Creek, Orangelo Thyme. I don't know if this is the same as Orange Thyme. I'm guessing it is. I do have a little bit of Orange Thyme. I don't know if it's gonna come back or not. Um, it should. Time is a perennial. However, we all know that cold snap that we got. I don't know what's going to come back after that. But there are a lot of different times out there that I would encourage you to try and find some really fun ones that not just be limited to, you know, like the English time. There's lavender time, lime time, coconut time, all kinds of stuff. Endless possibilities, and they all give you just a little bit of a different undertone depending on what you're cooking. Some of them are better, say, paired with fish, some are better with poultry. So, lots of different things. And another thing that I'm going to hopefully get a lot of this year is lavender. I want to grow a lot of lavender in my own garden for uh, drying. Um, I'm hoping that I can start making my own essential oils. If you want a video on that, Luke from MI Gardener has a really great one from a couple years back. But also to dry and using in soaps and bath salts and stuff like that. So we've got Munstead Lavender, Elegance Pink, Elegance Purple, Torch Minty Ice, that one's really pretty. Torch Blue, English Tall, and then two more of the Munstead Lavenders because since that's so common, I'm hoping that I can grow some to sell. Moving on to Calendula and Marigolds. Marigolds and Calendula are fantastic in a medicinal garden. They are a fantastic uh, trap crop, but you can make really nice salves. It's really great for your skin. We got Zeolite's Calendula. That was like a really pretty pink one. Then we got this Oopsie Daisy Calendula that I'll be growing again. We got Kilimanjaro White. And another thing of the Zeolites. Now let's talk about tomatoes. I am so excited for this new one that uh, Baker Creek put out for this next year. It's called Queen of the Night Tomato. How gorgeous is that? I'm so excited to grow that, see how it does. I think it's like a medium-sized tomato. It's 80 to 90 days mid-season. Yeah, three to three and a half ounce. It's just really pretty, so I'm really excited to see how that one goes. Got blush tomatoes. I grew Mortgage Lifter last year. I actually have three packs because they only come with like 25 and I wanted to sell some more of them. These get like up to two pounds. So 
with my irregular watering schedule they did crack quite often and they did take a long time to start producing but yeah they they were just an okay tomato they were pretty good they sold well so i'll start some more of those we've got champagne bubbles it's a cherry tomato and then let's see we've got ox heart which is another big meaty tomato and then we've got orange hat tomato which I love these I love these so much they're so adorable they're so great to grow in patio containers um, they are a micro tomato they're fantastic and then spoon tomato these are really tiny as you can see from the spoon some people grow them as like fillers in floral arrangements I don't really know why I'm growing them I just want to you know for the for fun and then peppers. I love growing peppers. I love harvesting peppers. So any peppers that don't get used, I will just dehydrate. Uh, during the harvest season, my, de my dehydrator like never turns off. So I just dehydrate them and uh, put them into jars or um, grind some down. I have a specific coffee grinder specifically for spices. This is a free seed that I got um, maybe a month or two ago these datil peppers. I've heard a lot of good things about those. And then I saved some peppers from the Pasilla Bajillo and the Jigsaw and Black Hungarian that I grew. Black Hungarian, I tried that pepper and it knocked my socks off. It was supposed to only be as spicy as a jalapeno. And I guess I'm just a wuss when it comes to heat, but it was spicy. It was super spicy. We got Numex Lemon Spice Pepper jalapeno got I don't even want to say this one I'm gonna butcher it this is a yellow pepper I'll put the name on the screen poblanos did horribly for me this last year I got like a handful out of five plants I don't really know what went wrong I probably won't grow poblanos again we got cayenne long slim if you're looking for a prolific pepper seriously grow pasilla bajillo it's also chili chilaca depending on if it's uh, dry or fresh but that is a really good spice to add to any of your mexican mole sauces enchilada sauces and it's super prolific we've got habanada per john's request he wanted something that wasn't spicy that he could maybe try and make some hot sauces out of and then orange sun sweet pepper Oh, and then I also have, this was sitting in the center, we've got lilac bell peppers. Lilac bell peppers did okay for me last year, but they ended up like reverting back and they ended up looking the same as my purple beauty peppers. So we'll see if they do that again this year, but either way, they were pretty good. Um, some of them stayed super small and like the perfect size for little like bell pepper appetizer bites. I still have some in my freezer. I do have regular ambrosia sweet corn in here, but on a more fun note, I've got strawberry popcorn and mini pink popcorn. Now something important to remember is that if your corn is tasseling at the same time, you will get some cross pollination for most people unless you can plant them acres apart. So just make sure that you are either only planting one variety of corn or you stagger them enough that they won't be forming their kernels at the same time. For carrots, I don't think I really got many new carrots this year i did get i did order these rainbow carrots but other than that i love purple carrots these are purple dragon carrots those are super fun they're like orange yellow on the inside and purple on the outside uh and as well as these cosmic purple carrots here carrots are something really great if you just go and sprinkle them everywhere i actually did that this spring and then i completely like i didn't think they were going to do anything then actually while we were putting christmas decorations up uh like october november ish i went around and just dug all of them out and i actually got a pretty good like carrot harvest that was just kind of like bonus because i didn't even realize that they were growing there anymore because I planted them in the spring and then I just forgot about them. Squash is another one of my weak points. I don't have enough land to grow all the squash and pumpkins that I do, 
but it doesn't stop me from buying a ridiculous amount. So we've got Nimba Zucchini, Gray Zucchini. I got two of these free seeds, the Bite Alpha. Got Lemon Cucumber, Wisconsin SMR. And my chickens love cucumbers, so I'm gonna be growing a lot of cucumbers for them this next year. White Wonder Cucumber, Mexican Sour Gherkin. These are fantastic to grow on trellises because they're super tiny. And I think they also go by the name of Mouse Melon. We've got Muncher, Telegraph Improved. I don't know, a cucumber is a cucumber to me pretty much. We've got Market More and Homemade Pickles. And then continuing on with the squash theme, we've got Waltham Butternut Squash, Sweet Meat Squash, Ngoikoi, don't know how to pronounce that, Sweet Nut Acorn, Tokyo Blue is a new one this year, as well as this Nicase. So let's just continue on down that squash gourd place here. We've got this African drum gourd. Now I grew Corsican gourds this past year and I currently have them outside on my front porch um, curing over the winter for the drying process. They grew, you know, maybe like this, this big or so. Um, and once they're cured, you can make things like bowls. You can carve uh, them and it just like super cool. And so when I saw this African drum gourd, I knew I had to try it because these are like huge and you can actually make drums out of them or even bigger bowls or whatever you want to do with them. Loofahs are another thing that I am going to try again this year. I didn't start it soon enough because where I live I have to start these inside quite a good deal in advance just because they take so long to mature and then dry on the vine and everything. So I got one that was mostly usable so I'm going to start these inside sooner. Uh, these are fantastic natural sponges. A lot of people when they see these for the first time say, I thought sponges grew in the ocean. That's a different type of sponge. But these are completely natural uh, dish sponge. You can use them in soaps. You can use them for beauty care, all kinds of stuff. These are the Corsican gourds that I was just talking about. I'm really excited to be able to do craft projects with them once they're cured over the winter. We've got black futsu squash. Lumina pumpkins, flat white boar, Jaradale squash. These right here, I made squash rolls out of the flesh, the meat of these. They were so good. Yeah, I highly recommend growing these. Got Cinderella squash, baby boo. These were so prolific. These are like the little white ones. I use them on my mantle for fall decorating. Super cute. We've got Table King acorn squash. Got scallop blend summer squash, like a patty pan squash, Long Island cheese, and musk to province. Do I have enough room to grow all of these? No. Will I try? Yes. Oh, and another one that, I don't know, I have things like that aren't in containers that need to be put in containers, but another one for the peppers and tomatoes. This pink bumblebee tomato was so prolific. It grew huge cherry tomatoes. I highly recommend this pink bumblebee tomato as well as this jigsaw pepper. These are hot peppers, but this grows in the most beautiful, elegant fashion. You could grow them in a large terracotta pot. It's maybe, you know, one of like the 12 inch or 14 inch terracotta pots. Truly gorgeous, has variegated leaves. At any given time, there are a ton of tiny little peppers on it that look like little ornaments. They range from like green to yellow to orange to red to purple, all different colors. They're gorgeous, highly recommend. I will probably start these uh, pretty soon because I want to get them to uh, like a pretty big size. You can even bring them in over the winter as like house plants. So yeah, these two, I, tr I really recommend for anybody who's looking for a really fun thing to grow in your garden. And then more beans. I had to split them up into like pole beans and bush beans is I think what I split them up as. So we've got slippery silks. These can be used as dry or fresh eating. 
Got Fort Portal Jade. These are Blue Lake Pole Beans. Those are, you know, like uh, just a traditional green bean. Got these Mayflower beans. And then some new ones. These Succotash. 1500 year old cave bean. And Black Knight runner beans. This is a new one uh, from Baker Creek this year. Got Oregon sugar pod peas and green arrow shelling peas. Then here, I grew these last year. These are the purple magnolia snap peas and they have really pretty uh, purple flowers and they produce really sweet, nice, delicious tender snap peas. This video is already half an hour long and I have not even gotten through one full container yet. Haven't even gotten any of the flowers. So I might have to make this into two parts here. So let's finish up with the vegetables and then the next video you will see will be the second part to this video. So it's not super long and that will be of all of the flowers that I have. All of the new flowers that I'm gonna be growing this next year. So we've got Market Express turnips, Black Spanish radish, and Bull's Blood beets. This is a fantastic one if you want to make your own cosmetics or your own like food dye because you can dehydrate these and grind them up into a powder and they make a very vibrant red that you can then use as blush. You can combine it with like cocoa powder and uh, arrowroot powder to create like a bronzer. You can, you know, do food dyes and stuff. So this is a really good one if you want to get into natural, naturally dyeing things. I think I am just gonna stop it here. That way we can, I'm just gonna break it up. Instead of into like vegetables and then flowers, it's gonna just end up being, this one was just everything in here. And so the next video you see will be everything in here. And that way it's not a ridiculously long video. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today and just sitting here and chatting about seeds with me. Um, I would love to know what you are excited to grow in your garden for this next year. I have a ton of content coming up talking about a lot of different types of gardens that maybe you haven't even thought of before. I hope you had a wonderful holiday and I will see you in the next video where we're gonna dive into what's in this box here. So go take that holiday money you got and invest it in your garden because to plant a garden is to believe in tomorrow. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye.